It's been a long wait, but finally, AMD enters the chat with its RX 7000 series GPU lineup. Now, is it enough to beat out the RTX 4090 and 4080 and grab some market share? Which one should you get? And what is gonna be the impact on GPU prices? Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. We'll go through the full announcement, including all the models, the specs, availability, and especially pricing. And we'll give you our thoughts on how these new Radeon entries stack up to Nvidia's RTX 4090 and 4080. 4080. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And this guy right here really appreciates it. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, Use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. On November 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, AMD finally announced its long-awaited RDNA 3-based RX 7000 series GPUs. Starting off with their flagship RX 7900 XTX model, which will launch with a $999 US MSRP on December 13th, 2022. Now that's the same MSRP as the 6900 XT had two years ago. AMD showed off what looked like an impressive reference cooler design, but much smaller than its direct competition in the RTX 4090, which is good news for those who don't want to have to buy a new PC case just to fit a GPU. The new GPU will be the first ever multi-chip module, or MCM for short, GPU. This is similar to AMD's chiplet technology on their Ryzen CPUs, which allows them to produce scalable designs while keeping down production costs. The flagship RX 7900 XTX will pack 96 compute units along with 24 gigabytes of 20 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory, including 96 megabytes of infinity cache. The card will have a total board power, or TBP, of just 355 watts. AMD also announced the RX 7900 XT, which will also launch on December 13th, 2022, with an MSR of $899 US. Now this is a slightly cut down version of the RX 7900 XTX, and features 84 compute units, along with 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, including 80 megabytes of infinity cache. The card will have a total board power of 300 watts, quite tame by high and GPU standards. Both the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX will be the first GPUs to utilize DisplayPort 2.1, which will allow for significantly higher refresh rates at 4K and even 8K. For comparison, Nvidia's RTX 4000 series is limited to DisplayPort 1.4. AMD also made sure to point out that these new GPUs will not use the new GPU power connector that has caused a lot of issues on the new NVIDIA RTX 4000 series GPUs, instead opting for two traditional 8-pin connectors. In terms of performance, AMD did not offer any direct comparisons to the RTX 4090, which is a little unusual. Almost all of their comparisons were made to either the RX 6900 XT or the RX 6950 XT, with claims that the new GPUs are up to 1.7 times faster in rasterization than their predecessors and 1.6 times faster in ray tracing. So we'll just have to wait and see where these GPUs land in terms of overall performance versus the RTX 4000 series offerings. But at their $899 and $999 price points, they should be set to stomp their price competition in the RTX 3090 Ti and RTX 3090. AMD also announced the impending launch of Fidelity Super Resolution, also called FSR 2.2. FSR is AMD's auto image upscaler that works with any GPU, and it claims that version 2.2 will bring some immediate image fidelity and FPS improvements. AMD also announced that FSR 3 will launch in 2023 and bring what it calls a massive leap in performance, though details were extremely sparse. AMD also announced a series of driver improvements in their Adrenaline software package, including a one-click mode that enables all of their anti-lag, upscaling, and other GPU features. For streamers, AMD announced that its RDNA 3 GPU encoding and media engine now allow the use of AV1 encoding, which will increase image quality and they claim speed up encoding by up to seven times faster. AMD has also finally decided to copy Intel QuickSync 
which allows the integrated GPU on the CPU to work with your dedicated GPU to encode video much faster for video editing. Now AMD calls the new technology Smart Access Video, ouch, and it appears to be just for Radeon 7000 GPUs paired with Ryzen 7000 CPUs. But one huge thing missing today, it was the announcement of an RX 7800 XT or RX 7800. Now many had expected these GPUs to also be announced to fill out the top of the mid-range, but it seems that we'll just have to wait until at least CES in early January 2023 to get a look at their specs and their release date. All right, so where does all this leave us in terms of GPU prices, in terms of the market, in terms of what you should be buying right now? Let's start off with what was announced today before we get into what was not announced. So what was announced today I thought was really, really good. Absolutely great move by AMD. They now have an XTX version of the 7900 XTX, and they're gonna give that to you for the same cost of the 6900 XT. Now, hopefully they occupy roughly the same portion of the market, which is this is going to be their top end GPU. We know that eventually they'll come out with a 7950 XTX, you know, a year or so from now. But let's just focus on this. Absolutely great. $899 performance from what little they showed us looks really, really good. If it is in fact even 1.5 times as good, they said 1.7 times as good as the 6950 XT, we'll be in really, really good shape because that's a great graphics card to grab for less than $1,000. Obviously we expect board partner models will be a little bit more. Let's see Let's see where the actual pricing comes out. We all know what BS, MSRPs have turned out to be. That being said, AMD right now, at least for their 6000 series, is undercutting Nvidia pretty much across the board. And I would expect them to go with that same business strategy as they now try and wrest market share for Nvidia. Nvidia's really left themselves exposed by going super, super high end. On the 7900 XT, the, the non-XTX version, I don't even know what to call it, it's hard to differentiate what, what's the difference between the two, how much performance we're really seeing. Great that we're not gonna have to go buy a new PSU. 300 watts for that card is really, really sane. 355, I think, for the 7900 XTX. These are very sane power consumption units. Love that they're not using the crappy power connectors that are having all those problems. So I think in terms of what was announced today, huge win for AMD. And I certainly think if you were in the market for like a 40, 80, 12, 16 gigabyte, they canceled the 12 gigabyte, then I would just go ahead and wait. I'd wait and see where those performance numbers come in. December 13th, I know it's gonna to be tough because Nvidia is basically pulsing the 4090s to continue the shortages, basically. So they're only putting as many cards into the market as will sell out immediately, and that's unfortunate. If you've got $1,600 burning a hole in your pocket and you want the best of the best, it's more than likely gonna be the 4090. And honestly, right now, given that they're completely sold out, scalpers are all over those things, you're probably gonna spend closer to 22, 23, maybe even $2,500 on a 4090 right now. So unless you have that much money, I don't see why you wouldn't just go ahead and buy one of the AMD GPUs. That being said, the 4080 16 gigabyte is coming down the pike and we really have no idea where they're gonna place uh, you know, with each other right now. In terms of overall GPU pricing, the 3090s have gotta get cheaper, the 3080s have gotta get cheaper. All those cards that are occupying this higher price tier have to get cheaper. Now the 6900 XT and the 6950 XT are already falling down in the lower price bracket, which is nice. You can get a 6900 XT right now for something like $660. I expect those prices to continue Continue to decline. That's overall good for the market. It would have been really super nice to get a 7800 and a 7800 XT. Obviously, AMD has decided to pull an Nvidia on that one and you know punt it into next year sometime because they don't feel pressured to release that right now with Nvidia doing the same thing. So overall, I think this is a big win for gamer. I think you're going to see GPU prices continue to go down. Now, yes, we're still talking about stupidly expensive GPUs at the high end. We're not going to get mid-range GPUs. It's clear until sometime. Deep, much deeper into 2023. So for those folks out there who, you know, I was saying maybe they'll announce something at the five to $600 range, they didn't do it. There was no RX 7800. So I would just go ahead, if you if you want to build something, especially with Black Friday coming up, I just grab something now, wouldn't even think twice about it. If you can afford to go up a little bit, I think the 7900 XT is going to be worth it in December 13th. You know, 7900 XTX, we'll have to see if it's worth the extra $100 price premium, but certainly a lot cheaper than the 4080 is going to be. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the new RX 7000 series GPUs and how they stack up to Nvidia's lineup? And of course, remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. 
and of course subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. Of course, if you missed our recent Boost My Build series, the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, we pull them back together and we massively increase your performance, then check out this video right here. We go through some amazing builds, including Ryzen 7000, and we'll catch you on the next one.